Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our service. We hope and pray that you'll be blessed by God as we share in this time together. Today, we're going to be focusing on the work of the Baptist Missionary Society in Chad. But before we begin our service, I just have one or two notices to give you. Uh, last week I gave you the wrong information about phoning to book into our in-person service in our building. So if you would like to do that, uh, the correct thing to do is to uh, either call Beverly Gray or Diane Donaldson and they will get you booked in. Uh, you can also book in via Church Suite if that's easier for you. And uh, do uh, book in early because spaces are limited. Next Sunday, uh, we're going to be joining with Baptist churches all over Scotland uh, for our morning service as we join the live stream of Canopy, uh, the assembly of uh, the Scottish Baptist churches, which is online this year. We're also planning to have a virtual AGM on Zoom on the 4th of November. uh, And if you've not already had details uh, of that, they should be with you in the next couple of days. Let's uh, commence our service uh, by joining together in prayer. Let us all pray. Eternal and everlasting God, you came into our world in Christ, sharing in our humanity. You come to us each day through your Holy Spirit, sharing in our every experience. And so now in this moment we come to you to share together in fellowship with you and with one another. Open our eyes to your presence and open our lives to your grace and power, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God with my dying breath. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have seen the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Jerusalem. Throughout the generations, praise the Lord.
Lord, we bring before you those whose lives have been damaged in some way by this pandemic. We pray for those who have lost their jobs. They are probably worrying about how to get food on their table. We pray that you would help them through those difficult times and that they would know that you are watching over them. We pray that those who are lonely and are unable to meet their loved ones because of lockdown, help them to realize that though it may seem that way, we are never truly alone. You are always watching over us. You know what we are going through, and we hope that everyone else will know it too. Lord, remember those who are sick and those who are caring for the sick, not just for the pandemic, but for other diseases. And we pray for the loved ones of these people who are unable to visit them. We are thankful for the strength and kindness that people have shown throughout this pandemic. Strengthen us in difficult days ahead and help us handle every interaction in love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to church. I hope you're all keeping well and enjoying some time with your family. Um, I just uh, would like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the things that God's been speaking about to me during this time, which has seen life change in drastic ways. Uh, I've been working from home since March. And for those of you who know me well, you'll know that this has been really difficult. Uh, I love to see and speak to people and isolation certainly doesn't suit me. Um, while listening to the radio in my office one day, I heard a psychologist giving advice to people who were struggling with mental health. He said that it was not good to listen to the news all the time as it was fully doom and gloom and offered people very little hope. When he said it, I knew exactly what he was talking about because having done that myself for months, listening to the radio and everybody arguing about what they think is the right thing to do, I was feeling a wee bit fed up and defeated myself. And you know, it got me thinking just how important it really is for us to stand on the promises of God rather than letting fear and discouragement influence our lives. God's word reminds us that we are more than conquerors and that the God we serve holds the future. He is our hope and our salvation. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He knows us. He sees us. He's holding us in this very minute. And nothing can separate us from his love. Isn't that just amazing and so encouraging? Um, I've also been using a book called Today I Choose, which has been written by Charlotte Gamble for my daily devotions. I would recommend it to you if you haven't already got it. It's really encouraged me to help me make choices to live and build my life God's way. It reminds me that although I can't choose the circumstances I find myself in, I can choose the way I respond to the circumstances. Um, and this morning, I just want to echo the words that Joshua said when he was facing giant problems. As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. Thanks.
Well, this year's BMS project focuses on the work of the staff at Gunnibor 2 Hospital in Chad, and we're going to watch a short film about that now. Well, I'm, I'm praying up every day that God will protect us. I pray that God will protect our team. So taking precautions, but praying a lot so that God will prevent us from being caught in uh, COVID. The heat is there and the fear of coronavirus is there. There is a lot of stress. How are you, are you tired? Well, <laughs> I'm still carrying on. Um, it's fine. That's my normal life. I feel like it's a privilege to take care of people and make sure that um, they're healthy. I'm so happy to do that every day, even though uh, in the evening I'm exhausted. But I, I will say, though, thank you because you have granted me um, the privilege. So restore me and I will be able to do it tomorrow again. So I've seen God really moving because people come to the hospital desperate and they move out of the hospital full of joy. So I, I'm so happy to do that. Um, I'm committed to do more. It was raining, and the van I was driving skidded and flipped over. I was terrified. I lost consciousness for an hour. I couldn't see anything. I lost the ability to do anything. A doctor in Cameroon wanted to amputate my leg. I spent five months with traditional healers. I suffered terribly. My boss told me that he'd been in a similar accident. But when he went to Guinnambore 2 Hospital, he got better. That's why he brought me here. My leg is starting to heal. The doctors here are really looking after me. I think that by the grace of God, everything is going to be okay. For those who have no idea about Chad and about Guinebo Hospital, um, Chad is a country where um, most of the people don't earn much to survive, and and they need care. So the most that most people come here because they know that they have they don't have much, but they, we're, we're gonna care for them. I I would say to anyone who is hearing this message, you can make a difference in many lives. My boy is alive thanks to this hospital. Coming here has strengthened my faith. I'm so happy. I trusted the midwives. I knew I'd have a good birth. If my family, my friend, my brother fell ill, I'd call Kabasu. You can save a life. You can bring someone to Jesus. That's for eternal life. So there is a lot to give. Today, I can give malaria treatments to patients who come to us. Today, I can diagnose over 30 patients. 
Will you help me? Today I can give the right medicine to the people who desperately need it. Will you help me? Today, as a doctor, I'm pleased to heal people that come to this hospital. Today, as a midwife, I can help 10 mothers give birth. Today, I can help ensure that we give quality care to all of our patients. Today, I can pray with patients in the operating theatre. Will you help me? We have Jesus to give to people, but we have skills to give good quality care. It costs just £13 to ensure each patient receives the quality care they need. For £13 you could help us save a life. And if you could give more, £80 can provide a nurse to take care of critically ill patients for a whole week. And could your fellowship come together to raise £695? That would mean 52 patients being cared for, four life-saving surgeries and five babies making it safely into the world. We deliver babies, we remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots. We identify coronavirus symptoms and get sufferers the help they need. We bind up wounds and perform surgery. We pray for the broken hearted. We show poor people a Christian welcome and we see them come to faith in Jesus. We do all of this every day. We do it through the heat and the long hours and the tears. We do it through the fear of Boko Haram. We do it because people here need us and because Jesus commands it. We do it thanks to you. I'm proud of the hospital because the hospital is really making a big difference. Well, today I want us to try and answer one of the great questions that has puzzled humanity for millennia. Is the glass half full or half empty? How we answer that question says a lot about our perspective on life. In our study in Revelation last week, we noted that in these difficult times that we're living through, we perhaps need to change our perspective to shift our gaze away from our difficulties and the the troubles we're living through and, and look more towards Jesus, who knows what we are going through and who knows what we need. He's the one that will see us through. Perspective, changing it, can change everything. Dr. Monty Lyman writes that perspective is often very humbling. As a doctor working in the NHS, even in the midst of a global pandemic, he knows that our healthcare system has been working very well. He writes, it has been amazing to see the mobilisation of thousands of new employees and redeployment of existing doctors and nurses, the building of brand new 4,000 bed hospitals in a matter of weeks, and businesses and universities working together to design ventilators and test vaccines. Of course, all of this is only possible because we live in a wealthy country that already has a world-class healthcare system. The situation is completely different for the remarkable staff at Guinea-Bore II Hospital in Chad. Despite limited resources, they treat anyone who comes in through the door of their desert hospital, often people who are desperately poor and could never afford the fees for treatment in a government hospital. As BMS mission worker Bethany Shrubsoul says, we deliver babies, we remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots, we bind up wounds and perform surgeries. When I first watched the the video of the work going on in Guinea Bore II Hospital, I was very moved, not only by the way that the staff dedicated their lives to caring for total strangers, but also uh, by the obvious joy that they had in their work. It was humbling and challenging at the same time. In these troubled times, when all of our lives have been upended by the COVID-19 pandemic, it's easy to lose our perspective on how incredibly blessed we are. 
even in the midst of the restrictions that we're currently living with. When we lose, lose our perspective on our blessedness, I think we lose something of our joy and thankfulness. So what is it that drives the staff at Guinebor too? How can they be so dedicated and so joyful in what must be very challenging circumstances? Well, we read in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and 27, God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that he may, they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. One of the things that drives the staff at Guinebor too is their understanding that since humankind is made by God in his own image, that means that every human being has incredible value because they are in some way like God. The created reflect their creator. Our value as human beings is not something that we earn, nor is it a capacity that we can lose. Rather, it's bestowed on the rich and the poor, on the healthy and the sick. It is a gift that comes from God. Perhaps we have heard that so often that we take it for granted, but it is a truth uh, wonderful and marvellous, and one that we ought to be continually thankful for. When the psalmist David thought about it, he was compelled to worship. And in Psalm 8, he wrote these words. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. Both the account of, da of creation and David's psalm show that as image bearers, despite the fact that his image is tainted within us since sin, since sin came into the world, nonetheless, we are loved and cared for by God. We see the effects of sin in the brokenness of the world. What was good has been corrupted. We see its effects all around us in broken relationships and in broken bodies. This brokenness brings us to the core of the Christian faith. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus into the world and he lived without sin amongst us, died on the cross in our place and rose again to bring us back into a relationship with God. In his own ministry, Jesus gave hope to those with broken bodies by healing the sick. But he also used that to point to that healing of a greater sickness, the sickness of sin. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 9, Jesus says, Which is easier, to say to this paralysed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. And he got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. Jesus healed the physically sick through his death and resurrection. He heals us from sin. That is why the healthcare workers in Guinea too are so passionate in their care for the physical, psychological and ultimately spiritual needs of their patients. To fully quote the BMS worker from earlier, we deliver babies, we remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots, we bind up wounds and perform surgeries. We pray for the brokenhearted. We show poor people a Christian welcome and we see them come to faith in Jesus. We do this every day. We do it through the heat and the long hours and the tears. We do it because people here need us and because Jesus commands it. Despite very limited resources, despite constant demands, the staff at, at Unibor 2 are compelled to follow Jesus' example in loving their fellow image bearers in Chad, attending to broken bodies and sharing the gospel, bringing temporary healing and eternal hope. 
The staff do what they do with joy in difficult circumstances because of that hope. And it's that same hope that will help to equip us, that will give us the same joy in all that we do for the gospel and the glory of Jesus, even in these difficult times we're living through. With Jesus, the glass isn't half full. It's always overflowing. Thanks for being with us today. Let's close our time by uh, praying together. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. May God bless you in the week ahead.